Okay, so let's uh, restart the class. So we're just talking about this problem of corruption. We can see that it's quite serious, right? Dark red is a highly, highly corrupt public sector. Do you understand public sector? Yeah. Government and people working for the government. Light red and orange countries are a little bit better, but the corruption is still common in the government and employees. Yellow countries are cleaner, but not perfect. So we can see on the map that a lot of the world is the red or darker red type of color, right? Korea here is also kind of a dark orange uh, color. So 68% of countries in the world have a serious corruption problem. That's half, more than half. And half of the G20 have a serious corruption problem. Okay? Not one single country is corruption free. Poor countries you lose $1 trillion a year due to corruption. So uh, it's the main reason that poor people are not able to get out of their predicament, right? And also capitalism. Capitalism is working well to develop the world, but capitalism doesn't work well when we have corruption. Okay? In the idea of capitalism, we should have fair competition, not corrupt competition. And the person with the better idea and the better technology and the better worker should be the one who gets ahead, right? But if we have corruption, it's not the person with the better technology or the better idea or so on who's getting ahead, okay? It's somebody who's paying the bribe is getting ahead. So you paid me a bribe, but your technology is worse than his technology, okay? So I choose you, you get the government contract, and the economy doesn't develop well, do you understand? Because he's, he's not as good as this guy. So we're choosing the, making the wrong decisions because of corruption. So we saw recently in Brazil, there was a big scandal by Petrobras is the making oil, especially countries with a lot of resources. Uh, the, it's called a resource curse because sometimes by having a lot of resources, it can damage their economy and make these kind of problems. So, in Brazil, politicians were reported to have taken kickbacks. Do you understand kickback? Yes. Kickback means that they give the contract to their friend, to him, and you give me money. That's a kickback. So a lot of politicians got kickbacks from the National Oil Company. So even the president and the ex-president of the country is involved in this scandal. So because of this scandal, tens of thousands of ordinary Brazilians have lost their jobs. So the ordinary people can suffer, okay? Because of this scandal, maybe some investors take their money out of Brazil, okay? Uh, sell their Brazilian stocks and sell whatever. So Brazilian economy suffers and the ordinary people can suffer. They didn't make the decisions that led to this scandal, but they are the ones living with the consequences. So this is a lot of money, $2 billion, right, in bribes, kickbacks, and money laundering. Tens of thousands of jobs lost, over a million people protesting on the streets in Brazil. Conflict. Countries in war or civil war have uh, a lot of poor people living there, and uh, goes hand in hand with, war goes hand in hand with corruption. So some of these countries which are in war have least peaceful ones with high corruptions. Are the clean countries exporting corruption overseas? We talked about Germany. The government public sector might be clean in these countries, but Sweden, a very clean country, but this Swedish-Finnish firm, Telesonera, is facing allegations, it's not proven, but it says that it's paid millions of dollars in bribes to secure business in Uzbekistan. Okay? So sometimes even the companies from these countries pay the bribe in the other country with the high corruption score. So as a result, the company is now pulling out of business in Central Asia. So half of the OECD countries are violating, here we can see the word, obligation, 
violating their international obligations to stop bribery on companies abroad. So corruption is a big problem uh, in the world at the moment. Okay? We see here also in Ukraine, a former president of Ukraine lived in a multi-million dollar villa, okay? sold off the state assets to private his friends, right? or for money for himself, ran away to Russia. So uh, we need to make sure that the company has a good ethics and system to stop our uh, workers from being corrupt or paying bribes. Okay, then shareholders. Uh, shareholders have the right, we said, to a fair return on their investments. But the managers are transparent. Okay, so the duty of the manager is called the fiduciary responsibility. Put the company's success first, okay? Except for fundamental rights. Of course, we have to keep the fundamental rights, okay? Don't take too much salary. So we didn't list uh, just the environment as the fundamental right, right? But, for example, we can't put the company profit ahead of people's safety or those things, right? Don't take too much salary, honest reporting, try to make a better governance. So we have all of those duties to our shareholder. Employees, we have fundamental rights like uh, health and safety. On top of that we have derivative rights like privacy and meaningful work. So the duties of the company, protect the fundamental rights, promote meaningful work, Ensure that decisions about promotion and demotion are related to job performance. So this is, this is a way to get rid of the discrimination, right? We, we, we give you some rating on your job performance and you get the promotion based on job performance, not on whether you're friends with the manager. Ensure that private relation information is only the only private information we need is the one which is related to job performance. <coughs> so we shouldn't ask for private information that we don't need. So here is uh, meaningful work okay, for the uh, employee. What is meaningful work for an employee? Okay? Promote professional development. So the worker is, has some opportunity to develop themselves. Okay? Promote moral development and provide a fair wage. Relate the employee's work to a higher cause. Do you understand this one? Higher cause means something higher. So I'm not just working for profit. There's another reason I'm working too. Okay? Make the world a better place. So for example, I'm working, our company is making some equipment, machinery. And this machinery helps people to build houses. Okay? Or this machinery helps people to get clean water. Okay? So we have to link our employees' work, let them know how it is linked to some higher cause, that they're doing something which is useful for society. Don't be too paternalistic. Do you understand pater? Pater is the Latin word for father. So paternalistic means, like, you have to do what I say. Okay? So we, we have to allow our employees some, a bit of, some leeway for creativity or that kind of thing, right? This is similar to this. Allow the employee to exercise autonomy. So allow our employee to be creative and have ideas. Okay? Uh, so these are kind of things that companies should be doing for their employees, looking after the rights of their employees. They had some questionnaire I saw before in Korea where Korean workers complained that the bosses don't listen to their opinions enough. Okay? So I guess that's one thing. Korea has a kind of a little bit of a paternalistic system and society. So maybe Korean companies could especially focus on that one, allowing their workers' opinions to be respected more and they allowing the workers to be more creative and come up with their own ideas. Then consumers, uh, consumers have a right to safe, non-defective products, honest advertising, 
For example, a recent one I saw in the news was an e-cigarette which was exploding in pockets. There was pictures of some people's legs online. Black leg. Do you know e-cigarette? Mm -hmm. Do you use e-cigarettes? Nobody uses e-cigarette? Electronic cigarette? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, you don't use that? So it was exploding. Some e-cigarettes were going up in people's pockets. So it's effective and not safe. Okay? So the duties, we have to disclose all safety risks. If there is a risk, we have to tell you about the risk. Don't deceive the consumer. Honest advertising. Okay? Don't tell the consumer that my product is going to make you lose weight. Right? If it doesn't make you lose weight. Some companies do that, right? They they get some doc even they pay doctors money and the doctor comes on TV and he says, I'm a doctor. If you eat this seed, it's going to make you lose weight. Okay? But it doesn't work. It's not scientifically proven. So you have to be careful about that. We can make a quality management system to make sure we have safe and non-defective products. So make a system for checking the quality. Be extra careful with children's products. We talked about special obligation for children because they're vulnerable. Okay? So we have to pay special attention on any product which is for children. <clears throat> Suppliers, we have to respect the contract. Okay? Negotiate fairly. Promote health and safe working conditions on the supply chain. So we can, with suppliers is an important one. It's one that many companies don't think of. But for example, Ford, so a nice example of Ford. The car industry has a lot of suppliers, right? Ford has a lot of suppliers who make all the small parts of the car. So Ford makes all of their suppliers to improve their environmental management system. They teach them all to improve their environmental management system. So that's a positive obligation, right? Not just we're improving our environmental management system, but also our suppliers. We are helping our suppliers to do that. Giving them time and helping them to do that. Governments and communities. So the rights they have keep the law. Right to the healthy and safe environment. Duties. Companies should follow the law. Pay money if we violate fundamental rights. And engage in CSR activities. So we'll talk about CSR, we have a class on CSR later, right? Helping the society and helping the environment. So you can see here in the book, you can also read it, different rights and uh, different obligations, okay? So let's discuss the questions with our partner. So give an example of a negative obligation, a positive obligation, and a special obligation. What obligations do managers have? when dealing with employees. So let's discuss the first question first. So, oh 
we tech? Don't rob money from the company. Don't steal money from the company. What's a positive obligation? non-discrimination. That's the point. What are they going to do to promote non-discrimination? Yes, that's kind of discrimination, but what are they going to do? Positive obligation means do something. So Michael, you have to give me an example. What are they going to do? What should they do? What action should they take? Transparent. Trans. Transparent. Higher processing. Make a transparent hiring process. Okay. What about a special obligation? What obligations do managers have when dealing with employees? <coughs> there are 20 students here and there's 21 on the register. Do you know which student is missing today? Just one student is missing. Thank <laughs> you. 
So Trey Junior. Okay, don't fire for unfair reasons. Anything else? Give the appropriate salary. Okay, so pay the appropriate salary, at least the substance salary. <coughs> okay, so then do you have any question about uh, <coughs> this part? Rights and duties of, of businesses? So, uh, like I said, we are doing our, uh, for the midterm, we have the assignment, which is uh, to look at the ethical dilemma, okay, and decide what we should do. So the first step is what we are doing for our assignment, look at our stakeholder claims, look at our mutual stakeholder capabilities and how we can improve them. And then we're following this, right? Our next step is going to be identify the rights of our different stakeholders. What rights do they have? Especially the fundamental rights are important. Okay? Then we're starting to get into the, after we identify the rights, we're starting to get into where we can make a decision, right? About what to do. What's the right thing to do? So when we're talking about rights, we're talking about what's the right thing to do also, okay? So we have to check people's rights before we make a decision. Because we don't want to infringe, you understand the word infringe? We don't want to infringe on anybody's rights, and we want to treat everybody with dignity. <coughs> so then, let's move on to the next part. Actually, first we can talk about the midterm assignment. Uh, if you like, you can stay in the same group as your first this short assignment, right? The midterm assignment is 30%. Uh, this assignment is 10%. So you should be spending three times more time on the midterm assignment than the this assignment, right? So uh, you can. If you like, you can change your group, or otherwise you can stay in the same uh, group for the midterm assignment. So you can download the document I'm downloading now from the from the website. So we have to make we have some cases which were used in the real life. In, uh, they have case competition in the US, right, for the universities. So it's a competition where students have to look at the ethical dilemma and they find the answer to the ethical dilemma. And the students who do the best analysis of the dilemma and come up with the best answer win the competition, right? Do you want to fly to the US and enter in that competition? Hmm? No? So then you're just going to present to the class. You can win the competition in the class by getting the better grade, right? So uh, <coughs> we can see here that the first steps of the ethical dilemma is uh, identify the stakeholders, right? Who are the stakeholders in the case? You don't have, what are their claims and interests? So you just have to look at the main actors. Do you understand the main actors? Main actors in the case are the stakeholders. Okay. So we have to decide what is good. What is good for the stakeholders, for society? Can we develop the stakeholders' capabilities to improve the situation? Okay. We, have, we said already here we have to be imaginative. Think about the long term. Right? 
prioritize what's good in the long term for the company. Look at the other companies and what they are doing, the best practice in the businesses. Okay, then the next, this was what we talked about, stakeholders' claims and developing the stakeholders' capabilities here, right? Then the next thing is what is the right thing to do? Okay, what does the company policy say? Company or professional rights, okay? What does the law say? Are there any fundamental rights involved? Are there any derivative rights involved? Are there any, especially vulnerable stakeholders, any special obligation in this case? Okay, then later we're going to talk about moral philosophy. What would a virtual, virtuous person do? It means, uh, according to the moral philosophy, what could be, uh, people have different moral reasoning. We'll talk about it later. Then we make an argument, right? What do you think should be done in the case? And you need to make a reasonable argument. Okay? So we have to balance what is good and then what with what is right. So we have to balance what's the best thing for the company for short longer term value, including all the stakeholders, and we have to balance that against the rights of the people in the case and make a decision about what's the right thing to do. Okay? Say what we should do in terms of obligations. So what should we do? What action should we take? Identify and cite data or evidence that supports your argument. Okay? Explain the moral principle. We'll talk about that soon. Okay? Deal with any possible counter-arguments. So this is two to three page report. Okay? So you can follow these. If you like, you can make steps like this. It may be, it may be different for different cases, you might not have all the steps. You might not have all the steps, right? You might be missing one step because something is missing. But you can try and follow these steps when you're doing your assignment, okay? So you write the report and then you just come here and talk about your dilemma and your report, okay? You briefly introduce the dilemma, right? This is the dilemma. Do you understand dilemma? Like problem that we have to make a decision about. And then you explain, that's just very short, telling the student about the dilemma. And then you explain about all of these things and why you made the decision that you made. Okay? Do you have any question about this? Uh, is it team assignment? Yes, it's team assignment. So we said that we had three groups of three and three groups of four. So we'll do the same for the midterm assignment. Three groups of three and three groups of four. I would like to know the time limit. The time limit for the presentation? Yeah. So, good question. So, usually, um, if we have three students, it can be, let's say, about three minutes per student. So, it's going to be ten minutes, or slightly over ten minutes, if you have four students. And if you have three students, it's going to be about eight minutes. Okay? Yes? Uh, the deadline, another good question. So we have the midterm week. So uh, we started the semester here. So one, two, three, six, seven, eight, is that right? The 20th of April, let me check again. Week one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight. So the week of the 20th of April, so we'll do the presentation in the two hour class. So um, we have six groups. So uh, I guess we can do some of the presentations on Thursday the 21st. Okay? Three presentations in the Thursday class, the one hour class. And we can have some review and three presentations on the Tuesday class. Okay. So on the Tuesday, and you can tell me which you prefer. So Tuesday the 19th or Thursday the 21st. And you should send me the written report uh, by the 15th, Friday the 15th.
So the midterm week is on the starting the 18th, right, of April. So it's better for you to finish the reports before the midterm week because you have to study for other subjects. Okay. So you should send me the report by the Friday of the week seven. Okay. And you just need to practice your presentation. We'll also spend some time in class because we use the computer room. We'll spend some. You can use some time in the class also to ask me questions and do some research and work together. Okay. So. Uh, do you have any other questions? Um, I'm sure there will be some kind of uh, dilemma case mm -hmm. uh, next uh, next week or <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So uh, just you can choose. Uh, there are some cases here on the website. Okay, I can I can put up more cases as well. Uh, so if you click on the cases, you can see this is the Intercollegiate Ethics Bowl National Championship. So in the U.S. they have a national championship of ethics debating. Okay, do you want me to make this competition in Korea? Start this competition, and then you guys can compete. In that. So, it has, these are the cases that the students were given in those, right? So, example here is uh, Big Pharma. Do you understand pharma? Pharmaceutical companies? Okay, so, we have technological advances and those kind of things, but other people don't like the technological advances. Mm, so, you know, you have to read about each case, choose a case, from the cases. I can put up some more cases too here. From this year's competition. So here we have one where the doctors uh, for example the doctors are selling drugs, right? But some drug companies uh, give the doctors food, entertainment. They take the doctors out for lunch. Okay, they take the doctors to the sports occasion. Is that ethical for the doctors to go out for lunch and go to the sports occasion? Because the doctors have a special obligation to their patients, right? So the patients just trust the doctor. The doctor says, buy this drug. Patients trust them, right? Whether they need the drug or not. So there's a problem in the US. Doctors sometimes are prescribing drugs to patients that they don't really need. Do you understand the problem? Right? So you can look down through cases and the first person to come with the group and the case can do that case. We can't have two groups doing the same case. Okay. So here we can see a lot of different cases. Uh, about 15. So you're going to choose only one case from the... Yes, just choose one case. And then you need to... You can talk to me about the case too. Well, you can, I can have to explain the, about some things about the case. So I'll go around the class in, when we're using the computer room and I'll ask, you know, ask if you have any questions. Move on to talking about edX programs. Do you understand program? What does program mean? different meanings. And this means we mean like system. Setting up an ethics system for the company or plan. 
So this is the definition of ethics. Ethics is a branch of philosophy that defines what is good for the individual and for society and establishes the nature of obligations or duties that people owe themselves and one another. In modern society, ethics defines how individuals, professionals and corporations choose to interact with each other. So we already learned kind of a framework, okay? Because there is a lack of practical or philosophical consensus regarding doing what is right. We have to add on the last bit, which is the moral fairness. So managers drive company long-term success and social welfare by understanding and meeting stakeholder claims, developing and leveraging mutual stakeholder capabilities. They have to remember there are some things they should always do and should never do. These are the rights. They have rights and duties. Okay? So the, last, the third issue is to develop moral character and motivate ethical conduct. So sometimes we have to make a decision where we have little information or little resources and different people have different ideas about what is the right thing, <coughs> what is the good thing to do. Managers might also, they don't have the motivation or the organizational resources to do the right thing. So some manager might say, it doesn't matter to me, I'm just going to discriminate, okay? Or I'm going to do the wrong thing. So they do, we need to, the company needs to make some system to help and support the managers to do the right thing. Okay? So this is the goal of the ethics program. The goal of an ethics program is to provide a practical framework to implement, this is a big word, ethical organizational integrity. So what's that? That allows individuals to overcome the practical barriers that stop them from coming to and acting upon ethical decisions. So we want to make the company a place where managers can make ethical decisions. Sometimes they have a barrier, something that's stopping them from making an ethical decision. Okay? For example, you're my friend, so maybe that's a barrier. I want to give you the promotion and not her. Right? You went out drinking with me. I remember we went to the Honore Bank together last week. Right? Whenever I suggest to go on the Heishik, you're always there pouring my drink next to my elbow, right? Whenever I sing the song, you always say, Oh, Sajamanin! <laughs> Very good at singing, right? Always pouring my drink and looking after me. But she never goes to the Heishik, right? She never went to the Narebon. She doesn't pour me any drinks. She doesn't talk to me much, right? Do you understand that's some barrier to making the ethical decision? It means that even though you do a great job and he does a terrible job, maybe I'm going to give him the promotion, okay? Because he's like my friend. So that's like some barrier. So we have to overcome these kind of practical barriers, okay? That stop us from making an ethical decision. Another practical barrier is you offer me a bribe. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why we can see bribery is higher in the less developed countries is that I don't have enough money to send my children to university, right? So if you pay me a bribe, now I can send my children to university. So it's a big difference for me, okay? So should I accept the bribe? That's a practical barrier. I think, yes, I'll accept the bribe, now I can send my children to university, okay? Or not. So, or even sometimes, for some people, it's even buying a, buying a computer. Right? We don't have a computer at home. So if I accept the bribe from him, I can buy a computer. Okay? That kind of thing. So, uh, when I, I remember when I was in Latin America, that the police only get paid about $300 a month. 300 US dollars a month. It's not really enough for them to buy things that they need or want. So that's one reason why the police accept the bribe. They're not getting paid very high salary. Okay? So they have this kind of practical barrier that they think, oh, if I take the bribe, I can get by this or I can buy this, right? So we want to overcome these kind of barriers and make this kind of framework so people can, in the organization, are 
working with integrity. How do you say integrity in Korean? Integrity is an important word, so we're going to search for that in Korean. Hmm? Tong hap? Tong hap? Do you understand tong hap? Do you have tong hap? Do you act with tong hap? Act with integrity, we say in English, means doing the right thing. To act with integrity. To have integrity means you do the right thing. Okay, you don't do the wrong thing. So Becoming ethical. How can we become ethical? Uh, we should exercise our mind by learning and practicing in order to know what ethics requires. We need certain character traits like honesty, okay, reliability, trustworthiness, to be a person who acts on ethical obligations. We all, we, maybe we need courage. Ethics is not just following rules. Following rules is just keeping the law. But it's about transforming ourselves and our behavior to reflect higher ideals about what is right. So we want to change ourselves and change our behavior so we can do the right thing. So let's have a look at Aristotle. Do you know Aristotle? Who is Aristotle? Uh, ancient Greece philosopher. Yeah. Ancient Greek philosopher. What kind of philosophy does he have? Do you know? Hmm? No? So Aristotle had this idea about ethics. So he said people want to have friends, family, they want to work, they want to have money, they want to be proud of what they did, it means have a higher cause. Right? We, we're doing something for a higher cause. Have a sense of self-worth, so feel valuable myself. Be entertained, so go to the cinema. Right? experience pleasure, but people usually want to be on the side of what is just and right. If you watch the movie Batman, do you want Batman to win or the Joker to win? Does anybody want the Joker to win? No? What about Superman? Do you want Superman to win or do you want the bad guys from another planet to win? Superman? <laughs> So there's a new movie, Superman and Batman together, right? So then you can hope they win, right? So he said people normally want to be on the side of what is just and right, naturally. They don't want to be the bad guys, right? But excessively focusing, we want all of these things. So we might have to make a trade-off. Do you understand trade-off? If I want to be acquire money, maybe I might not always be on the side of what is just and right. Okay? So, if we focus on one thing too much, it may inhibit our ability to maintain meaningful relationships. So we want money, but we also want to have friends and family. Okay, so this is an issue in Korea and Japan. Right? Korea and Japan have the longest working hours culture in the world. Okay? So, uh, we want to accomplish things at work, we want to get money, but we also want to have friends and family. So if we concentrate too much on just working and getting money and accomplishing something, maybe we're not going to have as much friends and family. Okay? So we can he think Aristotle is all about balance, finding the right balance. Do you understand balance? So finding the right balance between these things. These days we talk about the work life balance. Have you heard of work life balance? Work-life balance means finding the balance between working life and personal life. Okay? So we shouldn't do too much, one thing excessively. So if we just think about money, we could be greedy. That's excess. Do you understand excess? Another, how can you say another excess in another way in English? Too much. Okay? Doing something too much, Aristotle thinks is bad. Okay? We have another saying in English that too much of anything is bad for you, okay? And then on the other side we have, a, he has, so excess is one problem. The other side is vice, failing of excellence. Okay, virtue, he thinks is balanced, balanced, balanced character traits, finding the right balance. 
So virtuous people are the best, according to Aristotle, and virtue is the best of ethics. So virtuous people rationally assess situations. Do you understand rational? Okay. They react appropriately, they learn from their mistakes, and they develop their character. For example, if you give away money to charity, you give the money to the right person at the right time in the right amount. Okay, so for example, you give money to the migrants, the refugees center, to make some school for the children. They don't have any school for the children, right? So it's the right person, the refugee. Do you understand refugee? How do you say refugee in Korean? Refugee, the people from Syria, who there was the war. And the people are running away from the war and trying to go to Europe. Nanmin, did you say? Right? So we're giving it to the right person at the right time. Now they need the money for their, they're in the camp, right? And the right amount. You give just enough money to make the school, right? They do not let their emotions cloud their vision. But an, an example of giving away money in the wrong way is just, I see, uh, do you know Kanye West? Kanye West? Kanye West? Yes, Kim Kardashian? Yes. Kanye West asked Mark Zuckerberg for two millions of dollars to help him because he has a big debt <laughs> after paying for all the weddings and all those things, right? He has a lot of debt. So he asked Mark Zuckerberg, please give me millions of dollars because I'm a rapper, and the world needs rap. Rap is very important for the world, for people to be happy. What do you think? Do you think Mark Zuckerberg should give him the millions of dollars, or give to the refugees in the, to make a school in the camp? Which one is better? Second one. Second one, right? Well, Kenny West thinks that the rap is more important, probably. Right? He wouldn't agree with you. Right? But anyway, according to Aristotle, if Mark Zuckerberg knows how to give away the money the, this way, then he's acting well, virtuous. That's a virtuous behavior. He's a virtuous person. Okay? If he doesn't give any money to anybody, he's greedy. That's excess. Right? He's mean. If he, he can also make a failing by giving the wrong money to the wrong person. Okay? So finding the right balance or finding the virtuous way to do things is Aristotle's idea. So we'll continue to talk about that uh, in the next class. So you can read the chapter 2 and start on the chapter 3 in the book. Okay? You want to follow about the rights. What do you mean by couple group?